Hello everybody, welcome to the Leap Chat channel brought to you by the Leap for Lupus Awareness Campaign. I'm your host, Chandra Hightower, and today I wanted to talk to you about um, communicating with your medical team. I started to title this video, Choosing Your Medical Team, but I decided against that because people have different needs and people have different um, temperaments. Uh, some people can take the, the direct approach and some people can't. And so I just have a few tips uh, for you, uh, whether you have an established medical team or not. People with lupus generally have more than one physician because they have more than one thing going on. Some of the tips that I have for you when seeing your doctor, and then I have some tips for what you can do to kind of help facilitate um, getting the results that you want from your doctor's visit. You only have a short period of time and so I'm going to give you a few tips on how to accomplish um, doing that. Take a look at the surroundings when you walk in, particularly if you're a new patient. Is the staff friendly? Uh, are they talking to each other? Are they talking to you? Are they pleasant to you? Um, things like that. Is the office clean? You know, if you go to the restroom, is it clean? Uh, does it seem sterile and sanitary? Those kind of things. Um, next is when you when you walk into the doctor's office, uh, oftentimes you may wait a little bit, but when they come in and when they sit down and talk to you, particularly if you're a new patient, um, you want to see if they're interested in your medical history. Are they friendly? Are they looking at you? Are they touching you? Uh, when they examine you, um, are they really, really trying to, trying to get an idea of how you feel? Uh, and so, do they seem knowledgeable? Uh, if you ask them any questions, you know, do they seem to get irritated? Do they kind of generalize? Uh, do you know? Just do they seem knowledgeable about what's going on? Um, another thing is, uh, for instance, if you're an established patient. Does the doctor remember you? Do they remember you from the last visit? Uh, I know that they have, you know, doctors see a lot of patients, but if you're an established patient with a complex disorder like lupus, they should remember you when you come back. And, you know, do they bring your chart in? Are they looking, okay, let's see what we did last time? You know, asking you what's been going on since you last saw them. Generally, with specialists, um, you go two to three months. Uh, before you see them again. And so you want to be sure that you address what's been going on within that period of time. Don't go into the doctor's office generalizing your complaints. Try to be very specific. Uh, if your arm is hurting, say, say your arm is hurting. Say my shoulder was sore for two weeks or I couldn't, you know, get out of bed for two days you know, and try and be as specific as you can to help them, okay? Um, are they running the proper tests? Uh, I mean, not that you would know what they should be running, but just, you know, are they requesting, you know, testing when you tell them that you have a new symptom or problem? Are they recommending testing? Are they trying to find out what's going on? Again, are they concerned with um, your other medical conditions? And I know the specialists, you know, they're going to want to treat what your specific problem is, but what I mean by that is, uh, well, I have a cardiologist. Well, he should know if I have high blood pressure, okay? When I had it at a certain point, I don't have it anymore, but he wasn't even the one who found it. My gynecologist found that I had high blood pressure and referred me to a dietitian. And that brings me to my next point. Are they making proper referrals? If they don't know the answer, you know, if they're really trying to find out, are they making proper referrals? Um, my gynecologist should know if I have osteoporosis because hormones play a part in that. Uh, and not that you just ask them, you know, they're not treating that, but they need to know. For instance, yeah, my gynecologist knows about the uh, antiphospholipid antibody that I have. Well, you know, he's done two or three surgeries on me, and so he knows to give me a heparin shot to try to avoid a blood clotting issue. So they need to know things like that um, so that they'll know what to do, But particularly if you're a high-risk patient and on a lot of medications. I do not have a general practitioner, and that is because no one really wants to touch me. <laughs> I'm very high-risk. I'm on a lot of medications, and um, 
So all I see are specialists. I don't know if I mentioned the medications. Yeah, are they over-medicating you? And not that you know what you need to be on, but does it seem like every time you have a complaint, they're just ready to write out a script? They're not listening. They're not trying to find out first, uh, you know, or address any alternative methods, anything like that, particularly if you're already on a lot of medications. So I think, you know, you just have to use your judgment. Uh, and like I said, people have different needs and temperaments. Uh, and I think you should use your, your instincts and follow your gut when it comes to something like that. That's why I can't tell you how to choose. I'm just giving you tips on whether you're an established patient or, or not. Some tips I have for you as a patient um, is try to be as pleasant and compliant as possible. And you don't want to go in there and waste a doctor's visit, have them make recommendations, prescribe medication, and you leave there don't go get the medicine, won't take it, and you don't follow their advice. Okay, that's called non-compliance, and it won't get you anywhere. If you have questions or, um, or are apprehensive about the treatment they are prescribing you, you should discuss that with them. Don't, don't leave there and not follow their recommendations. And if you do, tell them. Tell them. And maybe maybe you can you know you guys can discuss something else, but I think that's just a waste. Uh, I, I think you should just get all you can out of the doctor's visits. I try very hard. I think I said in my last vlog to be as pleasant and compliant as possible. Uh, I never do well after my doctor's visits, and so um, I try to just get myself together. One of the things that helps me is, and not everybody has to do this, but again, you you only see specialists once every two to three months. Um, and so I take in my medication list. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, so I've taken my medication list. Okay, and this is just an example. And I have a table of my current treating physicians. Okay, and then within here I have what they're treating me for. Okay, and then it's all their um, address and contact information there. And I have that. And then, of course, I have my list of questions. And this is just, you know, but mainly I have my, you know, I'll, I'll discuss my symptoms since my last visit. Um, I'll, I'll try to date it, uh, you know, for instance, duration, you know, like I said, if I'm sleeping 14 hours a day for two weeks or if I'm not sleeping for two weeks, uh, then I'll just write that in there. Another thing that's important about something like this is that if you give this to the doctor, it becomes a part of your medical chart. Okay, and so there won't be any, any confusion about what's going on with you. They can't say they didn't know, uh, and it helps you be more specific and concise um, if you just kind of pay attention and document, document as you go along so that when you get there, you'll be, you'll be ready, okay? And so, and it cuts down a little bit on the anxiety and the nervousness. I'm always nervous. I'm always fearful when I go to the doctor, and I just try not to show that. And so, yeah, be, be as alert as you can. You, you need to be a participant in your medical treatment. They are the authority in the medical sense, but you are the patient, and it's your health that is at risk. Don't assume that they have all the answers. I used to get very upset because they were prescribing medications, and now I would still get sick. Well, now I, that's nobody's fault. I now know that. And so um, just try to be patient with them. But the main thing I will say is this, uh, and try not to badger them with questions. And take your questions in, but try not to badger them and make them feel like they're incompetent. You know, lupus is, is a mystery, and so they don't know everything, and they are doing the best they can with what they have. I now know that. I didn't know before. Um, and, it, you know, the main thing is, is if you don't trust your doctor, it's best that you try to find another one. Because if you don't trust your doctor, you won't be able to fully communicate uh, and you won't get the the most effective treatment that you that you need so hopefully I didn't run over my time um, but I think that's it if you guys have any questions for me you know I only get 10 minutes uh, just call me I mean call me <laughs> write to me <laughs> email me uh, and until next time leap the lupus <laughs>